Thanks, Aaron. Um, thanks, Charlie, for that blurb. Um, it's very generous. And um, thanks to everyone for reading so far. It's been great. Um, yeah. I'm going to read a few poems out of Working Animals just to start off. That's all. At the end of every month, assuming no HR drama, I pull away the perforated edges of my pay slip. This signifies my value. It's money to pay a man to rent a space to sleep where I can cool off and heat up ready meals and frozen pizza. It's a place to order takeaway to. It's a living room to hold a second hand leather sofa, some place to sit and eat chow mein from a clear plastic tray. Today, the landlord sent someone round to set out plastic traps to trick any hungry, hapless rats. This tactical placing of lipstick red boxes baited toxic. I spent a while thinking about rat poisons, notes of flavor. Does it fizz like diet pop against the gullet as it's sinking? This TV politician, is chewing through a kangaroo testicle for my entertainment. My chow mein is greasy and bland. The animal that therefore I am. Wiping away condensation to critique your reflection in a smeared mirror and the cat slips through the crack in the not quite shut door, catches you standing with your hands full, measuring flesh. An adult cat in the wild will never meow. But this is not the wild, this is the bathroom. So suddenly you're aware of its presence, you're blanching, trying to cover yourself. But the cat has always and never been familiar with nudity. with the ingenuity of Bernard Matthew. The rectangle, an efficient shape to make use of space. Consider the terrace house, consider the stacked apartments, consider the office block, the cramped battery hen, stooped under the weight of its meaty engineering. You stay cooped up like an insular Linnaeus, penning a whispered taxonomy of one. You name yourself I, your branch is the whole tree. Um, and the last one I'm gonna read from Working Animals. The questionable necessity of helipads. Like milk from earlier, the calendar sours, the clock is a trough full of swill. If we decline to swim or eat, we could spill past the rim. We could kill time all at once, done with increments. We could reshape the hour in our image. See, the sun's here sometimes and it's light. And at other times it's not, it's dark, that's all. Okay, um, next I'm gonna read a few poems from um, a newer pamphlet called Monomaniac um, that's coming out in, at the end of November with a feisty little outfit called Broken Sleep. So, <laughs> cheers Aaron. Um, yeah, I'm just going to get, I'll read the epigraph at the beginning. Um, it's a quote from Diane Arbus, and it says, I began to miss light like it really is. Um, all the poems in here have mono titles too. Monolith. I notice it one morning, all 50 feet tall of it projecting from a square of lawn at the far end of the garden. Dad insists it's always been there. He's sure we brought it with us from the house where we used to live. But I find this difficult to stomach. 
me not seeing earlier, given its shadow falls right across my window for most of the day, its glassy grey surface throwing light back, dazzling, prying neighbours and low-flying birds, I would have noticed, except growing flush round its base is a daffodil rim in uninterrupted spring bloom which fits with what Dad says, or at least implies the monolith didn't land or spring up overnight. There's no chance these flowers could survive that unscathed. I watch them, a row of dancing stars like a halo concussion round a cartoon's head. Monograph. I'd like to leave my own body of work beside these giants of toilet wall artistry to be canon in a cubicle. I sit with the cistern to my spine for the span of a history lesson with the core question of how best to render my message, whether in words or in pictogram with the rest of the fallacies. Permanence, the biggest commitment a marker can make. So I plan to take my time with this, only for polished footsteps to interrupt the tiled room's pensive acoustics. Enter two sixth form prefects lacking in elegance. I tell them I almost have it, just a few more minutes, but one hops over the stall to throw the latch open. They jostle me outside, my head of year has sent them convinced my life is in danger and I try to explain to her that yes of course it is it's a fact if I can't get this right I'll simply die um, and I'll read one more from Monomaniac and I'm going to read a couple of other things monotone I've been stockpiling hairspray, growing my hair when it's 50 feet long, I'll raise and set it vertical. I mark my progress on a tape measure. Before long, I'll need another. I've been thinking of logistics. I might need a scaffold for the final erection to hold it steady above my head when at last I'm reborn as an artifact. For some reason, my vision strikes them as obsessive. They say it looks as if I've not been sleeping, which is true, but nothing to do with the volume of my hair. It's that monolithic silence from the garden, keeping me awake. The doctor nods and gives me my medicines. I hold them in my palm like the future. Depending on producer, their capsules of pale green and yellow or plain green like daffodil buds. It's two to be taken each day. Soon I'll start to feel better. So to speed up the process, I swallow two fistfuls and lie down in bed. And then I'm going to read a couple of, if I've still got time, I think I have. I forgot to start my timer at the beginning, so. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm going to read a couple of um, just new loose poems that will probably be in full length collection at some point next year, watch this space. Plume. In the alley where we go to smoke, it happens again. I don't know why it's so often fire that does for me. This gray burning taste lingers in spite of the teeth cleans and meals eaten. Did I do either yet today? It doesn't matter. Nothing so glamorous this time as a dragon or wizard, it's your basic spontaneous combustion. Another flash added to the night's motley, then winked out. Companions stand above me like stoned angels, guarding my remains from scavengers, waiting for revival. There's a thing with feathers they do usually, downy feathers from the tail of some endangered bird, but there's so much need for resurrection lately, they're fresh out. Instead, they wait. It could be hours until I pull myself together again against entropy and updrafts from disparate matter that could by now be miles apart. Their watch never wavers. 
though I must make lonely company. My last poem, um, thanks for listening to everyone. Thanks, Aaron, for having me. My last poem is called The Protagonist. The story goes that there's a sword, a gentle incline of hillside, and power goes to whosoever plucks it from the outcrop where it's planted. But who's got that time, kind of time to spare? to test the tensile strength of a prophecy. You say, I'm so tired. I say, snap. I say, when I grow up, I want to be a main character, at least a speaking part. Ha ha, not likely, not in this economy, but there's always a need for backdrop, especially trees. I've taken to wearing several black jumpers at once, ideally cable knit. I want to fall in, with a crowd of philosophers. They'll tell me the gaps keep heat from escaping. Let the space itself be the protagonist. Let the table be headless and ready for guests. Thank you.